Well, now that we've gotten that underway, what is going on, you guys? It is just truly the real sack ride. My good friend Daniel is here, and we had decided a couple of days to, uh, ago, well, I think a week ago, um, to do another video, just mainly talking about um these uh, these MCU movies and and what we think that our top ten what would well, you know would be in our opinion. Um, for us in regards to uh, Marvel, Mar the Marvel movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, I like to say it's great. It's great to be back, and I pretty much got, got my list down. It it was really difficult to to really really try to condense this because for the past ten years, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe had, gi had given us like twenty movies now. With right. And trying to re try to really cram it down to just ten is it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It I had like forty and when I really tried I think I had like fourteen fourteen movies, but I, I think I managed I think I managed to get down to my to what I would probably consider the the ten best for me anyway. And just to keep this in mind, um, this is just all subjective. It's just it's the, my list is just my opinion. Your list will be just your opinion, right. and yeah. So, so there's no right reason why any of us should be should be right about this. Right, it's just right. how we. There, there literally the, is no right or wrong. There literally is no right or wrong. Like, this is just what we believe. Each of us, not 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 like collectively, but each of us feel is like the best. You know, in our opinion, type of movie that that really, you know, you know the the things that that really struck us, that really that really got to us. You know what I'm saying? So, mm. um, you so wanna... would you? It, do you, would you like to go first, or do you want me to go first on I this? I mean, you, you 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 can go first, and I can just, you know, you uh, can... yeah, just go along for the ride. Yeah, just go yeah. along for the ride. Okay, so I think I pretty much got it down. Okay, so coming in at my number 10 is going to be Ant-Man. The first Ant-Man movie. <laughs> what? Now, why is that? Well, no, I, th I think I, I think it's coming in at number 10 because I'm a, I'm a big fan of heist movies in general. And it's it has such a great sense of humor i think it's really connected to the fact that edgar wright actually initially worked on this and i think it really i think it, and also i think uh the cast again like most of the marvel movies are great i think paul rudd is really charming as scott as scott lang and i like michael douglas as as hank pym and of course eventually lily when those three they get together they have such a great dynamic uh, together on screen and of course michael Pe michael peña is is really funny in this at least i find it funny so i think that is why i would consider this one to be to be to be as be me probably at my number 10. If, if I'm going into a little bit of negatives, I do not really care that much for uh, Yellow Jacket as the villain. I think it's very much a cookie cutter <laughs> villain. Yeah, I couldn't really stand him that much. I couldn't, I couldn't really stand him that much. It was, it was mostly because, like, the fact that I, I, I didn't know much about Yellow Jacket, you know? And yeah. And, like, going into just seeing anime, like, I like... The reason why I say this is because I, I, I expressed in like my first uh, movie, uh, well, well, like like movie review about the Ant Man that I didn't even go to watch the Ant Man in, in theaters. Like it took me a minute just to just to actually watch. Like when when I watched it the first time to do a movie review, that was literally the first time I actually sat down and watched it. And to be honest with you, uh, I was more into seeing what the anime was about rather than just the villain i i didn't really care about m the, the villain that, that as much because absolutely i and i'm i completely agree with you on that and i'm i think but, but it's like i said i think i pretty much got my two cents in on this i i really do enjoy i really do enjoy it it definitely has a, a couple of problems especially in the villain department but 
Yeah, I think it. I think it, it's still very fun, and it. It, but like most Marvel movies, they are very much fun. Yeah, so. because because like for for some reason with 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 Marvel uh, um and with with Disney and Marvel ever since they did this, like hmm. they it, like their their goal is to try and capture what the hero can actually do, like 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 what the the, the hero's powers or or what his you know talents can actually do and for um for for for, for the ant man you already mm -hmm. noticed that they try to make sure that he has no idea what he's doing going in like the Absolutely. best the best thing that he can possibly do is to be as sneaky and as devious as he can because he's been known to uh you know to do burglaries and and, and, Absolutely. and and like and like it shows in the beginning of well not not the not the very beginning but the beginning of the movie that he knows what he's doing he knows exactly how yeah how to you know gut, yeah like, he get knows around how, type how of to think but yeah. yeah absolutely and it really it really does show also that he's really good to th to think on his feet like when he when he cracked the safe in really early on it really shows that he is re is really good on it, really good to really coming down to his wits in in some ways right right uh, yeah so yeah but that's what what I but Adman sort of comes in at my number 10 uh coming in at my number nine is going to be Thor Ragnarok now oh. this is yeah this is ju just a blast to watch <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's 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 fun. It's funny. It the, it has a great sense of humor in a lot of ways. I also think that the characters are really really great in this. And it, I think, if you're talking just out of just the three, four movies that we got, the first one being sort of okay, the second one kind of yeah, and but this one takes it takes such a great great. I guess you could say kind of kind of twist with the franchise, and instead of being so dire, it just it gets really bright, it gets colorful, it gets just much more fun than the previous ones. And Taika Waititi did an amazing job directing this, and yeah, and especially when you also cast Kate Blanchett as Hela, which is both threatening and as funny. As she is in this, I mean, it's just a ball. And just to put, just to put the sprinkles on the top, you just throw in Jeff Goldblum for reasons, I guess. <laughs> just, yeah. So it's really fun to see this. I also love the dynamic between Thor and the Hulk in this. I also love the yeah, addition of Valkyrie, played by Tessa Thompson. So. Yeah, I mean it's just so much, so much fun. I that's the only way to describe it. If, right. If, if I yeah, if I do had to kind of had to kind of nitpick, which I'm going to anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah um, the, I think in, to some extent, maybe some of the comedy does um, does kind of. I don't know really how to put this, but it's it sort of plays down the dra drama, so it doesn't have as much stakes as I probably would have liked the story to have, considering it's called Ragnarok. <laughs> but but I mean aside aside from that, it's it's just fun. It's really cool. Also, just as another another small nitpick, when I first saw it, I kind of noticed that someone some of someone the green screen looked very fake. So, and it wasn't just as like, convincing, so when I watched it, it sort of yanked me out of the movie for a few seconds, like, this doesn't look right. Mm. Um, but, yeah, so, but I don't have any, any much more to say about number two, about Thor Ragnarok, so, but, again, great, great cast, great comedy, yeah, that's very, col very colorful and all that. Well, so. to be honest with you, um, when I first uh, saw it in, in theaters, I I already knew it was gonna be something new, and the reason mm. why I I like I, I thought about I thought about that because the way the, tr the the way the trailer had built it up and the way the uh you know the um the animation and all that it, it was definitely eh? something different it's because. I, I, yeah. I, like I, I'm, I'm just gonna say it. We ne we had, we have not seen that in any of the Thor movies. Like yeah, right. for, for number one and number two, and like for uh, the number one movie and number two movies, 
Like, yeah. it was basically just, like, it, it, it was there. The best that we got for as far as animation in the background was, you, you know, us going to uh, uh, Asgard. And, mm -hmm. and seeing and, and seeing what uh, like the landscape and the water and and, and, yeah. like, and like the bills and all that like yeah. I the reason why I uh, why I praised it so much in like the mm -hmm. movie review that I did was because it was something that I was asking for I was asking mm -hmm. to, to have Thor go into different you know types of universes and planets rather than just always explore down to earth and and explore and explore the humans like where we've already Absolutely. seen We've already seen uh, uh, like uh, uh, a whole bunch of like human shit. Like, like show me more about aliens. Show me more yeah, about like. Yeah, I think that and that, that's actually a really good point that you're bringing up because Marvel has now really gone in to explore new worlds, and right. that's what's so, that's what's so, made so great because um, I think pretty much between like in in the early phase two, phase two of the MCU they pretty much wanted the movies to really fit the mold they have established. They didn't want to take risks. And I think pretty much uh, pretty much post Captain America Civil War, they said, okay, let's now we got everybody's attention. Everybody's okay with this. Now let's try to expand this. Right. Try, to bro try to make this much more of a broader and big scale in terms of a world. That this really feels like an all connecting universe that spans pretty much like every galaxy you can imagine. Right, exactly. Mm. Because because of the it, it like to me it was because of the fact that Thor was talking about like things going on in the the universe and you know and mm. and telling uh, Jade Foster all about where he came from and mm. uh, uh and and the uh, the nine realms and all that like yeah i want to see the nine realms i want I, I i actually like like for the second movie i wanted thor to actually go yeah and, and, and then the, explore the nine realms to see what the hell was he talking about cuz i want i want to see it yeah because i mean pretty much the opening of thor 2 it it really just begins with like the end of final battle for him Sort of after leaving Asgard and then having to come back, there's just a, a massive uh, mayhem going on in all the nine realms, and we just coming in, coming in just at the end for him. And right. I think it would have been a much better movie if we had had gotten that to get actually get him go and see it. him just fight across this and different different sorts of worlds. It right, would have like, been much better. Right, like like, like it, it was just like I, I said mm. in, in like the movie review about Thor Dark World. I would have loved to see Thor and the and, and, and his other uh you know his other friend his other godly friends go around each of the realms and then mm. took care of shit. I would have loved to see that. I would have honestly loved to see that, rather than him just going back down to Earth and dealing with the same bullshit that we saw in uh, yeah, one. which wasn't that even that interesting in the first place. It wasn't yeah. at all. It was not no. at all. Like no, it wasn't interesting, and I never never bought the romance. So and Cat Dennings is not that funny in this story, but no, no, she, no, no, she isn't. I'm sorry. No. No, me neither. Yeah, but but anyway, um, but that sort of closes in for me. That and it's probably also I think is also probably the most entertaining out of all out of most of the. If if you're just talking about just on an entertainment scale, I think this one comes into my top five. So, but that I'm just gonna leave it at that for Thor Ragnarok at number nine and right. move and, and move long. to my number eight and oh boy. I I I am almost tempted not to not to put this at number eight, but yeah, I just can't go into my number eight is going to be Spider-Man: Homecoming. What? Yeah, what? I know. I what? Know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why number eight? Okay, 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 okay. okay I'll just give, give you a moment to just to collect yourself <laughs> to really put yourself together. Okay, but okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I don't want to do this because you, you, you know this very well that I'm a Spider-Man fan as much as you are. Oh and yes, yeah. And trust me, I don't like to putting it this low on the list. But there are seven others that I think is just in some ways just better. But okay, I want. Okay, so I'll get into it. Uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming comes in to me at number eight because. 
I can't even say that it's even a bad movie. And, and that's the thing. Every single one from Spider-Man Homecoming all the way to my number one spot are good movies that I adore, okay? So, okay, so Spider-Man Homecoming, I, I really think, first of all, I want to talk about this because Tom Holland is, as much as, as much as I love Tobey Maguire growing up, Tom Holland is the better Peter Parker. He is yeah, the better Spider-Man. Absolutely, he honestly, captures the he captures the youthfulness. He yeah. captures the awkwardness. He he captures the wittiness of the character, and I can definitely give give him that. That this, that is the most solid thing throughout the entire movie, and. I'm also glad that they also brought in Tony Stark as sort of a mentoring figure in this, even though he's not in it much, but I think they just sparkled him just enough to to to, to make it seem to make make sort of his presence sort of earned. And yeah, that yeah, yeah. Great. And uh, I, I'm gonna I'm also I'm also gonna point this out. Like for me, mm -hmm. um, Sakurai Clan, um, my very first and most favorite movie has always been Spider-Man 1 and now it's featuring Tommy, Tommy McGuire and the, because of the fact that I always wanted to see a Spider-Man movie mm. and at that time the only person that I could see as Spider-Man was Tommy McGuire but as I was going through uh, I was going through this movie and watching it I, I began to realize that Tom Holland was the best one and it's simply because of the fact that uh, for Tommy Maguire, yes, he he was good, but he wasn't good enough. Like for for Tommy Maguire, it was always you know something that was kind of cringy with him. Like like when when he was playing as Spider Man, as Peter Parker, he it, it, like he wasn't that funny. He was not funny. It wasn't really that funny. He was more of like you know socially awkward. You know always uh, always getting to like the weird things, not being able to you know. To yeah. talk and, and whatnot, and like we only got to see him really be loose was in Spider Man 3. Sadly, in Spider Man 3, which was what one of the worst um Spider Man uh movies out, out, out of that whole uh trifecta of of mm -hmm. Tom, Tommy McGuire movies. So, when, when when Tom Holland came in, he he captured the, the very essence about Peter Parker because Peter Parker he's not a boring dude. He actually tells jokes. He he tells very funny jokes. He's he's not socially awkward. When he when he especially when he gets when he gets in a fight, he likes well, to but but pick up a lot of one liners. See, like he's very, like he, he, like he's very, you know, um, what's the word I'm trying to go for, for Peter Parker? Yeah, um, I I don't know. I guess I would go with like a wisecracker. Or yeah, he's oh yeah, he's a wisecracker. He's like he he always tries to put up put up these jokes. And and yeah. and he does it so well that you you just can't help but enjoy it. So yeah, yeah. But I think I want to make a, a slim argument on this when it comes to Tobey Maguire. Number one is that they try to play him sort of like the everyman. That yeah. is the one thing. And second of all, when the first Spider-Man movie came out, it was I think it was back in two thousand and two. So it mm -hmm. just uh, so. And at that point in time, comic book movies were nowhere where they are today. They weren't taken as seriously, and so when when it came to the the vice president being sort of spitting one-liners, I think they just kind of wanted to avoid that, right? So, because because they thought, okay, people are just not really gonna fall for this, so we're we're gonna play it more straight for now. So, but we have sort of moved, it's now been 15 years and. It's they have really moved on beyond that. Right, but, times yeah, have changed. Yeah. Times have changed, people. Time, times have changed, and things have things have gotten a lot better, at least right. for for the comic book genre. So, but yeah, I mean that is the one thing I love about about this movie is Tom Holland as Spider Man and especially Michael Keaton as Vulture, which I I think is just one of the better villains out of the entire MCU. So and the way they sort of made him more, more practical and with the alien tech and stuff like that, I uh, I thought it was really 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 cool. And also one thing I will say, oh where was I going with this? Um, 
Um, it the movie when it when he does the high school stuff, it really does feel like a John Hughes movie mm. in a lot of ways, and I fe- mean that mean that as a positive. And I, I truly do that. I mean, it's it's certainly generic, but it's but it kind of works. And I really really love sort of the great and the best scene for me in this entire thing is when Vulture sort of sort of figures out that Peter Parker is Spider Man. Because I think that is one of the best things is when a villain doesn't need a suit to just be threatening. He can ju- he can just yeah, talk yeah, calmly that, at you. That was one of the most dark, the the most serious, but yet dark scenes because you had no idea what he was gonna do to Peter. You had no idea how he was gonna um d- d- do that. All you saw was him looking back at him. Mm-hmm. Peter and, looking and, at and the and gun. putting the pieces together. Yeah. And yeah. It, Mm. And, 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 Peter, and Peter gets out of the car like, oh shit, I could have died. Like, like, yeah. like, 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 this is serious. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to take care of this, like, mm. because, uh, because of the fact that he, he's gotta be stopped. And like, and like, and like, you're like, you, you see that cooking in his mind, and, he, and, and then at the same time, he's like, oh, 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 crap. The, the, the girl I like, I, 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 I don't know. I can't do this stuff. Like I, yeah. I have to, I have to do this. I have to do something. So absolutely. So for like for for that, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. this was this was by far the, uh, in my opinion, the uh, best Spider-Man movie. And I'm yeah. saying that uh, out of the fact that my favorite Spider-Man movie was Spider-Man Two. Okay, yeah. people. Yeah, and my my personal favorite that has always been Spider-Man One, but. If, but if you're just talking, if you're just asking me which movie is the better movie in terms of best representing Spider-Man, it's clearly Spider-Man Hong Kong Homecoming. Yeah, yeah it's clearly. It's, clearly. it's it, uh, absolutely. So, but yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming comes in at my number eight. Okay. All right. Now what's number but, seven? Yeah. Okay. What's number up seven? to number seven is going to be Captain America: The Winter Soldier. I for number seven. Yeah, I put it. <laughs> Yeah, true. I think you're gonna find that in a lot of places with my list on this. Um, but yeah, Captain America: The Winter Soldier is my number seven, and I love the aspect of it being much more of a political thriller. I love it being more of an espionage thriller, and it's definitely one of the better sequels to up to the original film. Uh, and it's it 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 pumps up the action, it pumps up the drama, it. And it makes it's extremely emotional in a lot of places. Like one of the most emotional scenes for me that is still one of the most heartbreaking things I ever have to witness is the scene where Steve Rogers visits Peggy Carter at at the at the hospital. Oh yeah, where, that was yeah. so that was so sad. Yeah. That was yeah. so sad. Yeah, to see her just in, both physically and mentally sort of fading away. Yes. Like, this is this is the love of his life, and they never got got to go on a date. They never got to have a life together. He is still pretty much in his prime because he has been a popsicle for for seventy years. Right, and, exactly. And she and she has lived her full life and is 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 on her is basically on her way out. And yeah, it's really heavy. It gets really heavy in a lot of places. Yeah, because like I think I think for this movie, it was trying to tackle the fact that Steve Rogers had to face the fact that he is no longer. Yeah, the world he knew has sort of moved on, and he it, has to try gone. to adapt. It, 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 yeah. It's not—it's not sort of moved on. It's moving on. It is moving on, and he has to get like get with the times and just live live his life the way it is now. Yeah, but he's but he still have that same sense of morals that he had right. during World War Two. So when he's looking at it and saying, "What you guys are doing isn't right." And right. that, I think, is what makes Captain America such a great character in this. That even though he is living in a new, in a, basically a changed world, but he still has that same core values. That makes it makes this character so great. And I love the dyna- dynamic between both Cap and Black Widow, which is all, which is always fun to watch every single time I see this. It really is. That, yeah. 
And and I think you're a fan of this, not just, mostly because of Scarlett Johansson. Anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, but hey. also fun. And also, hey, I'm, hey, I'm with you. I don't, I don't hate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh okay I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna say this though i'm gonna say this though for me what what really got me about this movie was it wasn't just the fact that, about scarlett johansson it was yeah. it, it was honestly it was honestly the fact uh, about them um coming to the terms about bucky and what happened yeah. to bucky yeah. and, and everything. absolutely and that is i mean if you are a comic book fan you sort of see the twist coming but if you're just watching the movie, then it it's a really heartbreaking twist when Cap sort of unmasks the Winter Soldier and it's like Bucky. Yeah, Who the yeah, hell is we, Bucky? It, it, like we just see, well, we just see his face. We see, we, we see Bucky's face, and 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 it's like, what the hell what? did they do to you? Like, uh, yeah, like, you're still alive. Yeah, like you're still alive. I yeah. like what, well, like, cause, cause, like in the first Captain America movie, all we saw of Bucky was him going down in the snow, and and mm. and, and, and and possibly dying. But no, we uh, we then see this the, this little uh video shot, um of of what's left of the doctor, the the, the, the um yeah. that German doctor saying, um uh, uh, showing um Steve how they they basically salvaged him. And, yeah. Um. And 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 yeah. recreated Which, like an ana like a like like an animantium uh. uh yeah, with a with sort arm. of vibranium like arm arm and yeah. yeah. In that's kind of also sort of the thing. It does feel a little bit like a retcon, but it's one that I'm okay with. Yeah, um, seriously, honestly. Because yeah. because as far as Bucky, like we don't really have much for Bucky except the fact that he can use guns and he has that arm. That's the only yeah. thing that we got uh, that we have of him. And, yeah, and, and that's that, that's kind of also sort of a little bit of negative for me because I could have used a little bit more Winter Soldier in this to sort of flesh him out a little bit more. But I mean that, but for but for what I got, I I was really surprised about this, and yeah. and I think I think it's just I don't think it's just a solid ball. Comic book movie, superhero movie, action action thriller. So yeah, it easily takes the takes the number seven spot for me, for me on my list. Okay, so coming in at number six for me is going to be Avengers, the first Avengers movie, and it's 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 a fun popcorn movie as I like to call it to really sort of put the band sort Wait of putting the band. Hold up, yeah? pause, pause, time out. So uh, for Avengers one comes in number six. Yeah, it comes in at my number six. Bam. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm I would have thought. I would have thought you would have said number four, but number six. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was even surprised when I put the list together too. And and that th and that's also sort of the thing about my list. It can very easily sh shift. It can very easily be shuffled. So. So all of a sudden tomorrow the list will be completely different, but I'm <laughs> so so. But yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure about putting it at number six. Um, it's it's just so it's just fun, like most Marvel movies. It's fun. It has great interaction between these characters that don't really get along and sort of had to come together for the big big um big threat that is trying to destroy the world or take over the world and it's yeah it's i mean i think i saw the Furious like three times and every, every single time hulk gra grabs loki it's i just start laughing every oh, single yeah, time oh yeah no that scene was funny as shit <laughs> yeah that scene was funny as shit because we just see loki you know talking all this all this crap and then yeah. and then hulk just like man get, get shut the Get yeah. out of my face with that bull crap. I don't care what you have to say. I'm puny god. But anyway. Yeah, but yeah, then, that's... Um, the thing that got me mostly about this movie and the thing that, me that made me really like it and enjoy it, it was honestly the, uh, the connection that we just kept seeing with each of, of the heroes. We saw, well, well we saw a, a connection between... Uh, Captain America and Iron Man, and both of their views on on ba on basically 
America and how things are being handled and everything. And then we yeah. saw the connection between Black Widow and um and um freaking uh between Bruce uh, Banner uh, and, uh, and Bruce Banner and and how she sees him and and how uh, and how he uh, he wants to still be in hiding because he knows he's still a, a, a threat a monster that that can destroy everything. Yeah, and, and one thing I definitely have to mention is the reca the recasting of Edward Norton for oh, Mark yeah, Ruffalo. Oh yeah, yeah, because because this was the recast that this was the first time that we saw Bruce Banner again, but this time it wasn't the Bruce Banner that we got in the movie. This this was a totally different Bruce Banner. Yeah, um, and it Mark Ruffalo. And it, yeah, with Mark Ruffalo instead of Edward Norton. If if I if I kind of had to get choosy, I would have probably preferred uh, Edward Norton because I think he's a much stronger actor, but. Mark Ruffalo isn't a bad choice, and he's really proven himself, at least to me, that th that he really takes this character and makes it his own. Even though it's technically the same character from The Incredible Hulk, he yeah. gives a different flair to it, which makes it work. And yeah, I think it's I think it's a really I was I thought it was a great decision that they made. Um, and the uh, it's just jam packed with action, and it's. Yeah, it's just a blast to watch. It just to is. yeah, to see Cat throwing his shield, you see Iron Man doing his thing, you see Thor throwing his hammer. Everything is just really comes together in and, this. And, and then Hulk just going ham on every damn thing in the world. And then, yeah. And, 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 and then and then we got to see about what Hawkeye does in, in, in all of that. And then yeah. And then how doggone. In invincible and yet sexy Black Widow is. I had to yeah. point that out. Don't, don't, don't get upset. But um, no, I'm not. Yeah. No, I'm telling the stack right, Clay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, this movie, at uh, uh, out of uh, out of overall, it was honestly fun because every every uh, like the uh, all the characters were just their 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 uh their ways of life just kept bouncing off of each other, and 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 that's the thing that I enjoyed mostly about this. Absolutely. So, so yeah, coming in number yeah. five. My number five is going to be Iron Man, the first Iron Man movie to, that started this whole shebang with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And hmm. yeah, I, okay. I yeah, I mean, it came out pretty much just. I think it wasn't my most anticipated movie that year because it came out it came out in 2008 which which is uh, pretty much around the same time as the dark knight and but uh, so i didn't think much of it plus the fact that robert downey jr had pretty pretty much been very shady pretty sketchy in his in his in his private life with with drugs and alcohol so he was yeah. pretty much pretty much pretty much had pretty much destroyed his own career twice and and so going into this, I was like, yeah, whatever, I can, I'll watch it. And came out really freaking surprised. I, it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I re really love the chem. I think that the chemistry between uh, Tony Stark and Pepper Potts is really genuine. The, the way they look and feel about each other. I love that it really comes down to his bits and, bits and how he uses technology and... It's just so exciting. It's so thrilling. It's so, yeah. And compared to the, all the other Marvel movies, this one feels like the most, oh, pretty much one of the most standalone out of if, out of all of them. I mean, if it, if even if it were to take out like the post credit scene, it's still a solid movie on its own. Mm. Um, and if I do have to sort of get a little bit into the negative for me about this, is that the second half is. Not as strong as the first. I mean, it kind of reminds me, and I probably might have mentioned this before. Um, it's in a lot of ways kind of like Batman Begins, where the first half it has some of the greatest um, uh, exposition and build-up for a character, and then the second half is kind of standard. And that is probably my really big negative about this: that when we came to the final to the final showdown between. Uh, Obadiah Stane and Tony Stark, it really felt like the video game version. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, that, yeah, but that is sort of like the only negative negativity that I have about it because I think that the cast is great. Robert Downey Jr. is what makes this. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. This is the one of the most perfect casting choices ever made for a superhero movie ever. Yeah, because for Robert Downey Jr., I, I I don't know what it is, but it like his I think it was just his personality, and and like it, like he he really captured absolutely not only the funny uh, the the, uh, the funny part of Tony Stark, but also the very serious part because. When, when when we get down to like Tony Stark, we realize he's an asshole. Mm. He's he, like yeah. he, he he's an asshole all, all the dog on time. But yeah. when when it really when it really matters, he knows mm. what he has to do. And for, and for this, he realized that you know he was doing this for the wrong reasons. And and he has all of this knowledge, all of this uh, engineering uh, uh, technology. To, to use and he's not doing anything to help the planet he's not doing anything to help people and and when he once he realizes that he's in full um um gotta do this mode he, he like yeah. he, he's in full i i need to help people i need to help them i don't i don't want to see all this yeah. suffering anymore because obviously we got people that that are taking my tech for the wrong reasons and i yeah. shut it down so, yeah, so and, I, this, I mean, and I'm the one who's been providing this, right, and so I've been I, need, I need to correct this. I've got, yes, yeah, so I've got to correct this, and, and that's the one thing that I remember about, about Iron Man. It was just the fact that he was trying to correct the fact that there were people who were stealing his, his technology and his designs behind his back. And mm. Iron Man trying to be the, uh, the man that he is, but and, and yet, you know, keep a solo life because he, because he realizes that... You know, uh, when doing this, he's gonna make a lot of enemies. So, Absolutely. So when when when, that, when doing that, he tends to hurt some of the people that are closest to him because the people want to, the people that love him want to help him, but mm. he realizes that he can only do this by himself. He's the only one that can do this by himself. Technically, in his head, he's a critical mm. thinker. People, that that's how he is. That that's how Tony Stark always always has been. So, absolutely, and he and he constantly working on something. Right, and constantly. That, absolutely, he constantly keeps tinkering and coming up with new things and new ideas, and that that's what makes the character so great in this. Right. So yeah, so my so that's my number five. Iron Man is my number five. Okay, coming in at number four is going to be Black Panther. Number four. Number four. Why number four? Number four. Hey. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I knew this would happen. Um, Daniel, you're yeah. killing me right now. Daniel. Daniel, yeah. you're killing me right now. Okay. So, okay. But but before before I go in, what? Why number yeah. four? Why number four? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was a really hard decision between this one and another. Which one I would put into the into the top three spot? So I okay. I can't even even talk straight now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, you threw me off on this. So, uh, yeah, okay. Just having a sip here. Okay. Black Panther is one one epic movie. Absolutely. I Without question. Without question. Ab absolutely. I love the love the technology. I love the the, the way they said they build up Wakanda. I the cast here once again is amazing. Like, um, like Chadwick Boseman really, really makes the, makes the child the child really come to life. I absolutely, I think uh, Danai Guara, I think his name is. Sorry if I botched that. Uh, as Okoye is freaking badass. I love uh, Letitia Wright as the sister. She is so freaking funny and. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, absolutely. And she and when she and the child really comes together, they really do encourage e each other. And it, you, I really do because I do have a sister on my own, and I really Same. feel that connection. Same. Yeah. So it feels very genuine in that. And of course, you've got the I guess some people will call them the token white <laughs> token white guys, or it has the Tolkien white guys, as I like to call them, because of Lord of the Rings, um, <laughs> Annie Serkis and Martin, because of Annie Serkis and Martin Freeman. Oh, and and of course, and of course, you have of course um, Angela Bassett as the Queen Mother, which is always gracious and always looks beautiful, no matter what. Angela uh, Bassett. I, I just want to point out, Angela Bassett does not age. That woman does not age. She does not age. 
Yeah, she. Tom Cruise probably showed her the Fountain of Youth, and <laughs> they know. <laughs> <laughs> she does not age worth a damn. Like, yeah, like, so, so they they won't age at all. And and I and trust me, this movie is amazing, absolutely. And and of course, the big standout about this movie is the villain. As, yes. I mean, that's my, Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger steals the show yes. in this. Yes. Absolutely. I, I think the best villain since Loki. I think it's. I think it's probably either second or my third favorite villain in the entire MCU. Because she, because he's a flat out beast when him when it comes to his physicality. He's a badass. Like like yeah. like 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 for 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 those for for a villain. If I ever wanted to see a villain, I I would have to put him as as number one. It's because of the fact that he had a motive, he had a reason mm -hmm. for why he was doing it, and he did not give yeah. a damn who he had to hurt. He didn't care who he had to go through. He didn't care who where where he had to go, what he had to do. He was going to do it regardless of whatever. The hell, uh, you know, people felt about him. That was Absolutely. basically Killmonger at at, at a T, and that's basically how Michael B. Jordan captured this character. He did it well. He Absolutely, did it and well. and the best scene for me in this entire movie is, I mean, aside from the Korea chase car chase scene, it's the fight scene between T'Challa and Killmonger, the first oh, yes. one. Yes. Yes. Where. I mean, it's it's not just because of the action, but because of the emotion. I mean, you can you can really see because um, Killmonger uses a sword and a spear in the fight, so he which really represents his aggression. And mm -hmm. T'Challa is using a spear and a and a shield. Yeah, a sword so, and a shield. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you really see the the difference, but in, in, in fighting styles, like he was yeah. more of the aggressive. T'Challa was more of on the defensive. And, yeah, and, he was and trying to not go for the pressure uh, not necessarily def not ne necessarily defensive, but he was more balanced. Yeah, he was he, more of a balanced. He was more person. conventional. He was more conventional and more balanced because he knew that he needed a way to to attack, but also a way to defend himself. So, and and that is and it's such a great scene. And when when what happens to Forrest Whitaker, which I won't spoil. I mean, you really it really shows how great Chadwick Boseman is as an actor because I can really sense the emotion in yeah. how how absolutely devastated he was. And pretty much Killmonger after that basically just mocks him, like, is this your king? Huh? Is this your king? Right. Like absolutely like because he know he's won in the in that moment. Yeah, because the, the the way to attack a for especially for a villain, because mm. the reason why I say that he captures so well because for a villain, the the main focus to, is to attack someone's heart to really to really to really make them break down and and and, and lose their uh their urge to fight. If you do Absolutely. that, you like if you if you've done that, then that means you have won. You have yeah. automatically won. Yeah, absolutely, and. It, and like and like I said, this movie is absolutely absolutely fantastic from the from the cast to the action to the villain, and and especially one thing I will I really took away from the movie is the score, that there's a lot of percussion and it really and it really amplifies the um, the atmosphere for Wakanda in this. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's because of the fact that like. Oh my God! I could go on and on about black about this damn movie, but the one thing that I'll have to say it is the fact of how prestigious Wakanda looked. Absolutely, and I'm with you on that. Well, Wakanda looks so damn prestigious, and mm. and, and we see how much like um Killmonger just wanted just wanted to be there. He uh, like he like 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 he didn't want to be left alone. Like he did, they, like he didn't want them to leave him. And mm. and and he, he was so upset. It was it was mainly just him being upset as to the fact as to why would they leave one of their mm. own behind simply because of the fact yeah. about bloodline. Like, yeah, like that is that is the part that messes me up. Is right. the fact that that King T'Chaka, um, basically, ki yeah, King T'Chaka kills his own brother and sort of and leaves orphan kill Killmonger as an orphan in the streets. Yeah, of L.A. and. That to me is what's really messed up. Just how cold blooded it is. Right, and, and like, and, and like, he he doesn't even realize it until after, until in the afterlife when T'Challa addresses it to him. That's yeah, the thing that's so messed up. He didn't mm. realize what he had done until his son addressed it to him. 
Yeah, because it's a monster of their own making. Right. Right. So, the, so honestly, like the, this movie, I'm gonna say this right now. Nobody thought it was gonna be good, but it turned out to be one of the best this year. Oh, it's I knew it was going to be good as soon as I saw saw the cast and saw that it was Ryan Coogler who directed, co-wrote and directed this. I right. knew this was gonna be a hit. Right. Right. So, uh, uh, like, like nobody thought we were gonna get it. No one, no one. Uh, like, but, but people had doubts about it. I didn't. And and, and the moment it went on screen, it, it it went on screen. It just exploded. So yeah. absolutely. Black Panther. Absolutely. By yeah, far Black the best. Now, now, what's number three? What what's your top three? Okay. Now, coming in at number three is going to be Avengers: Infinity War. And they. <laughs> They have been really building up to this for the past 10 years, and to me, it really paid off. Because this movie is epic in every sense of the meaning of the word. That you have now pretty much one of the, the probably in my opinion, the best, I guess you could say, space, uh, you, the universe based villain in Thanos. You have the int having sort of everybody sort of being split and sort of having tr to try and come back together again to stop this and so I mean I don't even know where to start because we have already discussed this movie before and yes, I don't have. know what yeah and I don't know even what else to really bring to this that is new because I've seen this movie like four or five times already and it's 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 just masterful how the Russo brothers managed Take so many plot lines, so many characters, and make it all float seamlessly. Right, it's a, to make it all fit like that, and and yeah. I and I, I think it was the fact it, that that it, it, like it was the build up. It was the build up with uh, with all of the the movies and all the cutscenes and all of the uh the you know the, <sighs> the secret scenes that we see of just of uh, things just building up to this point, and then Thanos just still sitting on his his throne, just watching all the shit. And yeah, like, it, and cause like it, it, it just it, it made they made sure that you knew that some shit was gonna go down, um, in mm. one of these movies, and this movie by far took the cake as the, as it's the starting point of uh, of Thanos just coming off his throne and just saying, okay, now I had to deal with this. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean, Thanos, I mean, I. I I got nothing, nothing else to to really, to re, to really say except the fact that it is epic. It puts all, all the characters they have built up, minus a minus a couple, and I won't spoil who, but they really put him to put them to good use in this. And yes. I, yeah, and I you know don't know what else to say about it. Except, so I'm just gonna leave it at that and right. move on to my number two because, right. I mean. I mean, we we already done like like an hour and a half on this, so we really have. So let, yeah, let, let's let's move on before we really yeah. get into it. Yeah. Okay. So my number two is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy. The now, first one. The first one. Okay. Yeah, because I think this is such. I mean, and so just to give a little bit of of a backstory here, the first time I saw Guardians of the Galaxy, I. Wasn't probably in, probably hadn't the right mindset for it. I, when I came out for it, I came, I came out, came out of it. Um, I said, okay, it has some funny moments. It has some good jokes. I liked some of the characters, but that was just weird. And yeah, so it was. I, yeah, it was. And so I didn't have the right mindset because, and I think this is the, and I think this is the, this is it. The movie is incredibly stupid, and I went into it trying to be cerebral <laughs> about it. <laughs> but yeah, um... yeah. So, so when I saw it, I tried to be. I was like, "This doesn't make any sense." <laughs> so, so when <laughs> keep going. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So, it. A couple of years went by without seeing it again, and and okay, so in 2016 I decided okay I need to need to pick up a few a few 
Blu-rays from for the from the Marvel of the Marvel movies that I right. that I haven't gotten into my collection yet. Okay. So so one so one night I decided okay I need to pop in Guardians of the Galaxy just to see it again and not be as pretentious as I was going in the first time, and I instantly fell in love with this. And yeah, I I am I'm, even though the story again once again the movie is stupid, it has a lot of fun with it. It has a lot of fun with it. It has a great sense of humor. I absolutely love the characters of like Star of Star Lord and Gamora and Drax and of course the two that steals the show is of course Rocket and Groot. Oh yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and I just I me mean, Rocket is one one of the coolest things I have ever seen, and I don't know why I haven't heard this before. Right, a talking I, raccoon, yeah, a talking raccoon with a machine gun. What else do you need? Right, seriously, <laughs> seriously, and I, I think that was the, the the thing that that really captured the uh, the whole um, persona of, of Rocket. It was just the fact that he was an, an experimented um, animal that yeah. literally knew how to talk and how to to use weapons. Yeah, and um, especially when you also have Drax, which is so dry with it, and takes oh everything. God. It takes everything. No metaphors can be used. He takes everything literally. And Dave Bautista yeah. just killed it as this character. Like, like nobody thought, nobody thought that Dave would actually do, would actually be a good character in in this in a Marvel movie. But oh. goddamn, did he prove us wrong? Lord yeah, Jesus, he did. did he prove us wrong? Because Absolutely. I was laughing the entire time. With every, yeah. every time, every time Drag spoke, it was always something. It it, 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 it was something that was so dark on funny because it caught me off guard. It caught yeah. me so off guard, and I just had to laugh. I had to laugh. Yeah. So so did I. And one one of the fun things is the fact that Gamora played. Uh, so is Alana. Is great as Gamora, and she. He's kind of like the the one that is level-headed mm -hmm. around uh, just around this group of morons, and it, just, it makes the whole dynamic of the, of this group so great. Um, but the one thing I'm will I had to take uh, take to this, uh, or I should say, which I really admire this movie for, is its soundtrack. Oh the yes, so the soundtrack in this movie is on freaking believable. Like, there are some deep, like, early, late 60s, early 70s cut music in this, and as soon as uh, Red Bone Come and Get Your Love kicks in for the opening credits, I was like, okay, I'm sold on this. Right, right, like, I like, like you had no idea that it was just gonna pop off like that, and but then when you hear the music, it was like, oh, oh, this is this type of movie. Oh, oh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have fun with this. And, I, and yeah. I, I think the reason why I love it so much is because of the fact that what I was expecting from Thor, I got out of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Because it was literally a bunch of people literally exploring the galaxy. Like, yeah. that was one of the things that I, I, I wanted. I wanted to see that. I wanted to see different mm -hmm. people. I, I'm, I'm that type of person that likes to see different shit. And when it comes to that... They, they, they did it, and that was the reason why I like Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It was, it was just because of the fact that they were exploring around the galaxy. Not once did the Guardians ever go to Earth. They never yeah. went to Earth uh, as far as um, um, Infinity War goes. But yeah, they yeah. never went down to Earth. They always stayed in space. So Yeah, absolutely. So it feels entirely different from the, from the rest of the MCU. Right. So, and that, that is also one great thing. And also, when you speak of Infinity War, um, there is something so I okay, a little bit of a spoiler. Um, when it comes to Avengers: Infinity War, I, I, it sort of dawned on me the fact that the only God, only Guardian, Guardian of the Galaxy that makes it is Rocket. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I kind of. I mean, I really can't count Nebula as being a member of the Guardians, but. But everybody else goes, like Gamora goes, Star Lord, Drax, Groot. The, yeah. The, yeah. So if Rocket had seen that, holy shit. Yeah, he would have. He would have flipped out. He he honestly would have flipped out. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, like Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one is coming in my number two. It's such a fun ride. It really is to really, really see this band put together and the sound. Like I said, the soundtrack is amazing. But it'd be. 
on David Bowie or Marvin Gaye or J Jackson Five or whatever. It it really puts it really sets the tone for this movie. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Now. So now here's my number one, and my number one is going to be Captain America: Civil War. I knew you were gonna say it. I knew, you know, you know, I knew somehow you were going to put in that movie. I knew somehow, because I knew we were going to talk about it. I knew yeah. we were going to talk about it. And the reason why I say that is because that movie, other than um, 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 Black Panther and Infinity War, it was one of the most expecting, most hyped, most um, um, talked about movies ever. Because it surprised us so much. With, with with the lineup and and the people that were gonna be in this, especially the debut Spider Man. Yeah. Oh my heavenly Jesus! When I, I I like I mentioned this before in in my Civil War movie review. When I first found out about Spider Man coming into that movie, I was on the bus and I was on the bus going uh, uh, going uh, coming home from work, and when I saw the trailer at the end and I was and I just saw. A, 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 a web uh, shootout and and basically snatched Captain America's shield. I instantaneously jumped out of my bus seat. I jumped right out of my bus seat and I almost hit my head because it was it was just the fact that I wanted Spider-Man to be in in that movie universe so damn much that I was I, I was really upset at the fact that um, the MCU what the, like what the, like didn't say anything about it. They literally didn't say nothing about it. They, they, were, they were quiet the whole time until that scene. Like, oh my Jesus. Yeah, they really kept quiet about, about, the, about the Sony deal. So, and I, I kind of sort of hope that they really, in some ways, I kind of hope they wouldn't put it in the trailer. I would have liked it to be a surprise for the movie. But, but as far as putting it in the trailer goes, I'm like, yeah, okay, you got me on this. It's okay. So yeah, and I really love the fact how well they once again they balance much like Infinity War, they balance so many characters, and including that, really, really also managed to represents the differences in the ideology really coming to fruition between uh, Steve Rogers and Tony Stark. Like even that they have. It's not really much of a villain in this. That it's just two guys having two different sets of ideals and two different views on the world, right. and and really try, and really had to try to find a way to coalesce it. And they and in the end, because it's called civil war, they they don't. And seeing how they who who's aligning with who, I think right. that is also really good. And one thing I also really like about this is. How much they actually managed to build up the relationship between Vision and Scarlet Witch. Yeah. So yeah, and it feels, and it's one of those things where I'm like, this is weird, but I buy this. The fact that she is a is sort of a an enhanced individual that falls in love with an android, and they really share that chemistry. Right. And and of course, when you're also throwing the addition of Black Power, like like. Black and when you also yeah both Black Panther and Spider-Man into this and doesn't make it seem jarring and they feel like they actually got the screen time they they deserve they did that yeah and that is masterful and the Russo brothers once again they they really knocked it out of the park with this and the airport scene airport battle is amazing just to witness them just go at it, yeah, go yeah, at yeah, it. like just, just all of them just just like literally going at it and and trying to to stop e each other the only thing that that could have made this movie so much better is the fact that at at that point in time which which I, i'm not salty about it now but um the fact that disney and marvel couldn't include the word mutant in, into yeah. uh, the movie. That was one of the things that actually tore me up inside when I found out that the only reason why they couldn't, you know, give out the word mutant is because of the fact that Fox was so um, tight gripped. With, with, yeah, with, with, they with really didn't want to share at yeah, all. They really so... didn't want to share. So the only thing yeah. that would have made it better is if we saw Wolverine doing some crazy shit um um trying to figure out why uh, all this is going on if if i would have saw that oh 
Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we both wish that both for Civil War and Infinity War to have also included the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. Yes. But, yes. yeah. But it's, but it, I mean, who knows? It might, at least we might have that crossover in the future. Yeah, that's, no. the, that's what I'm saying. It's not to say it's not to say that we won't get it in, in the near future because now that they have the rights, yeah, it's been it's been approved. So, oh yeah, and, and, and bump you, Comcast, for trying to act like y'all had a chance to to get a uh, uh, Fox. What what even got? Well, what even the world got into you that y'all were gonna do something with that? Yeah, I'll, you can't fight the mouse. Stay. Yeah, you can't fight the mouse. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> sit down. Like, 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 sit down. Stop, stop trying to, 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 to make things worse. But yeah, yeah. um, yeah. And also, if if Comcast had ended up get, getting Fox, I mean, Disney would have just bought Comcast. Right. Like, like, yeah. I don't even understand how that would have worked. Like, like, like they yeah. thought they were gonna escape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't prevent the in- inevitable that we all gonna get controlled by Disney one day. So <laughs> Disney yeah. is gonna but. get in people's hearts one way or another. But, yes, we um, can. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, this, that has been our top ten list. Like, like uh, honestly, I can't even argue with it. But, but, but from the way you, you like, you like the logic that you put into it. Like, yeah. Is um, is there anyone you would like to mention? Honestly, um, uh, okay, we're gonna. I, I'm, I'm gonna do in um um um, in honorable mentions. Uh, honestly, uh, the Incredible Hulk, and that was simply because of the fact of the fight scene, and and, and we got to see um, um Abomination for the first time. Um, yeah, I think I think we can mention Doctor Strange. Yes, Doctor Strange. Mention mentioned, mentioned, mentioned him. You, be, you better mention him because that was a good movie, even yeah. though uh it, it was uh, it was unexpected, but it still was a good movie. Um. What else? Yeah, I'm trying to sort of, sort of think of this. I mean, I mean, you kind of like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy too. So if you want to mention that, but... yeah, well, okay, Gu- Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy too. I'll, I'll mention and, that. And 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 one one honorable mention from for me is Captain America: The First Avenger. Yes. Um, yes. Absolutely. Because yeah, because that was uh, even though like no one expected n- nothing from that, it was honestly a good movie. Honestly. Yeah. But yes, uh, that's going to be it for our top 10 list and in honorable mansions. Um, let, let us know in the comments down below what is your top 10 list and, and what are your, uh, you know, some of your honorable mentions. If you want to extend it, feel free to like to, to do so and um, and share your opinions and whatnot. As such, this has been The Real, uh, the Real Sakurai and my good friend um, Daniel who uh, had the you know took, took, took the liberty to, to share with us you know his, uh, his insights on 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 his knowledge about marvel movies and comic books and, and whatnot and we will mm. catch you guys uh in the next, next time yeah. in the next one yeah see you mm. later peace yeah.